see. I'm going to hit record real quick. I'm going to share this into Facebook really quickly, and then we'll jump into it. Uh, tag Los Angeles. Hey, Megan, how you doing? Los Angeles. I'm one about you. I'm doing good, thanks. Let me go in real quick. Training and info. All right, we are going to go into a group. Can I do this in more than one group? I don't know. I think I'm going to do it into my timeline, and then from there I'll share it. Da -da -da. I have to run into the store about five minutes. So I'm going to mute myself in case they noise. Okay, I appreciate it, man. You're not you, you you're not able to come out to LA this round, huh? I'm I'm just now getting back to work because I've been dealing with severe sciatic issues for over a month now. So I lost a whole lot of income with going through my savings and stuff. So I'm just trying to get in the room and get a seat at the table. It's gonna happen though because of my my desire, my passion for wanting to make an impact. And then because my heart for God, like I'm I'm doing everything and trying to do it the right way. But it's hey, gonna happen. I love that, man. That's 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 the people that we love to connect with and come out to our events and, and have a great time. Um yes, all right. a couple more people jumping in here. Uh let's see. I'm just saying, what time is it? It is 102. We are live on Facebook, we're live in the group, we're live in high impact, we're live in tag talks, and we are live in my regular stream. So hi everybody. This is Raul Lopez Jr. Um, we are talking about the amazing event coming up in uh, the incredible event coming up in Los Angeles, LAX. Um, it's is a uh, I always say trolley and I can't think of the ride. What is it called when they when you get on a little bus and it takes you from the hotel to the to the airport? Shuttle. A shuttle. <laughs> why can't why can't I remember that? The 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 shuttle from LAX to the Westin Hotel where we're having our event. Is, is I think it's a three minute ride. So we've made it very easy. Uh, we picked a great location so that it's easy to fly in internationally. We got a few people flying in internationally and then you get the shuttle right there. You don't need Ubers, you don't need rental cars, you don't need anything. Uh, three days of incredible talks and training over at the Westin in Los Angeles, LAX. So it's gonna be super fun. I just saw somebody else jump in. Uh, let's see who do we have. We have Megan, I can see you. Doreen, how you doing Doreen? We have Mo and Neil. Neil, I think we talked the other day, buddy. Good to see you. Um, if you guys can't put on your cameras, great. If you if you're not able to, can you drive in whatever you're doing? Be safe. Um, and uh, but you're we're welcome to listen. In. There he is. What's up, Neil? How you doing, buddy? Good to see you again. You're welcome to unmute yourself if you'd like. Let me bring up now that we're streaming everywhere. We're having a good time. Um, I always say this uh, uh, that I, I want to keep this to 20, 30 minutes, just information, a little bit of inspiration, information about the event. Um, often we end up going an hour, but it's because everybody's having a great time and there's a lot of good questions. And uh, we're we're helping each other build and grow as as we do this. Oh, we got some other people jumping in. Uh, one more minute and we're going to get fully started. It takes about till five minutes for everybody to jump in. Um, let me bring up my notes real quickly. Da, da, da. Let's see here. Where are my notes? There we go. All right. So um, let's see who just jumped in. We'll say hello. Robert. Robert, how you doing? I don't know that we've met before. Robert, let me see how you pronounce your last name. Ter Termanini, and MD. Welcome, my friend. Term Ter Termanini. Um, it's, it's not... Nice to be here. Thank you for the invitation. Um, I apologize. Uh, I'm my video is having a little, a couple issues, but I'm trying to get it fixed as soon as possible. No, nope, no problem, my friend. I appreciate you jumping in. For those of you who, uh, well, actually, if you're not watching, then you can't tell. But th there's a lot of people that wanted to jump in and they're not able to come in at this time. But as this will be recorded and it's it's going to be live in the group. It's in live in the group right now, so you can watch it on the replay later. If you catch it on the replay and you have any questions, just comment in the comments and or send me a PM and uh, I'll answer any further questions that you have. And who just jumped? Oh, there's Doreen. I see you now. Hey, Doreen, how you doing? I think we may have talked before. Your name looks very familiar. Feel free to unmute. Everybody kind of gets muted as they jump in. Uh oh, I'm here. Hi. Yes, we have. We have talked before and I'm glad to be here. All right. Where, where are you located, Doreen? Remind me. Right now, I am in Nairobi, Kenya. Oh, okay. I didn't know. Is it Neil? Where are you at? Unmute yourself. Oh, you're in Jamaica. 
You're in Jamaica, not close. Yeah, yeah. So I'm I know you better than you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I know Neil's speaking about coming in, flying in from uh, between you and your teammate that we talked to in LA. Uh, you guys are flying in. Uh, so that's going to be fun to meet you. Um, Doreen, I don't know if you're able to come in. It's not really short notice. It's probably a good time. But LAX, we did choose it. I was mentioning that because it's an easy place to, to fly in from. Uh, Mr. Moe's over there shopping. Uh, that's great. All right. What time is it? It's 106. So we are going to get started. And uh, what, what I want to do is I want to get into what TAG is about. There's a couple of you here who I haven't seen on before. So I'll give a brief understanding. The others that are here, I think you guys are already following me or following TAG Talks and, and you've been on these Zooms before. So you have an idea. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm going to start from the beginning. My name is Raul Lopez Jr. I'm the founder of TAG Talks. Um, and Tag Talks stands for Transparency, Acceptance, and Growth. And in a nutshell, our platform started and is around sharing a personal story of resilience, overcoming some form of a challenge in your life, and what is the wisdom that you gained from it, okay? And that wisdom, I tell everybody, is not common knowledge. That wisdom is the fruit of the vine, right? And what does that mean? Um, I give the example of an apple tree, right? An apple tree has apples, the apples drop off or somebody picks those apples and they eat them for nutrients. The, the, the apples are not for the tree. That's what I call your wisdom. Your wisdom that you've gained through your good and your bad times, most wisdom we seem to gain from our hard times, right? We come through some fire, we think we're never gonna make it. We're resilient in it and we come through it and there's wisdom gained in that. And we look back at it and we go, I understand why that happened now because here's what I've learned from it. And we're able to help other people with that wisdom. So your, your, your wisdom is, oh, sorry, I'm sorry. Your wisdom is the fruit of the vine. Um, and then I go into that, the, the, the reason that we need to share that wisdom is, is, is twofold. And this is my personal, okay? It's a calling, right? The darkness you've been through, it, it's a calling. For me personally, um, I've written I've written seven books, but two of them are, uh, this is my first book ever. Heal the boy and the man will appear. Learn the importance of understanding and expressing your emotions, the subtitle. And then I recently relaunched this and the subtitle of this second version is Transforming Childhood Trauma with God and Psychology. And the reason that I showed you that is because sharing your personal story, understanding, learning, and growing, then I had the calling to share all the wisdom that I've gained. And my original calling was Kids in Juvenile Hall, right? My story in short, abandoned, taken from my father at a very young age, started doing drugs at the age of nine, uh, had my first child at the age of 13. And then at 14, I got incarcerated. And I lived a very wild life between the ages of nine, all the way until I was about 27, 28 years old, from being taken from my mother, a ward of the court, to being titled a menace to society where I lived, um, drugs, alcohol, all the way to state prison. In state prison, I decided to make a change. Uh, and that change was seeking why answers to three questions. Why do I do what I do? Why do I act the way that I act? And why do I feel the way that I feel? Seeking those answers, I discovered college, psychology, neuroscience, uh, meditation, all of these things that help me understand the biology, the psychology of the, the right? There's, there's science to this body. Psychology is, is science. Biology is science, the brain and the body. And then I found God. And that's where the healing came in, right? This is, this is my story. And this is why I do what I do. Um, and when the healing came in, I got the calling to go help kids in juvenile hall. And I started sharing my story, the wisdom I'd gained from the streets to prisons, to, to school, to the healing side of things, all the way to the spirit with these kids so that they didn't end up living the life that I lived. That's my passion. That's my core, right? What am I doing in that? I've accepted the things that I've lived. Life didn't happen to me. It happened for me. I'm being transparent in it. And I grow when I share it. I realize that, but I help others grow, right? And those are the acronym for TAG, transparency, acceptance, and growth. That's the core of who we are. Sharing my story in juvenile hall, in prisons, in churches, with individuals, anybody that I could just to try and pass this wisdom that I had gained from my life is, is, is so fulfilling. And I attract a lot of people like just like you who have this, this calling to help and serve others in whatever industry, whatever type of coaching, whatever, whatever you're doing, it's, I, I hope, is to help and to serve others. And you have a story also, and you have wisdom also, and you have to believe and you have to know that people will pay you for your past to improve their future. How do we grow? We learn from people, right? Everything that you know today, you gotta you got, you got really comprehend this. Everything that you know today, you've learned from somebody else. Most of the time growing up, 
we don't we don't realize that people are teaching us things and they're sinking into our brain into our subconscious without us even knowing it and a lot of times especially when we're kids right we look at adults and and they're the authority in our lives and we just believe whatever they tell us right uh one one of the examples that i like to give on that and this is not a, a shot at any other culture right and so i'll just say it this way if you were raised and, and there are a few of you here in other countries if you were raised in another country there are other countries who don't believe the religious stuff that a lot of Americans believe. Okay, and I don't even want to get into religion or politics. I don't get into that. I'm just giving the example of the difference in beliefs, right? Mm -hmm. There are countries, and again, it's not a shot at anybody, that believe that they worship cows, right? They, they worship cows, and I think they even like wash themselves up in the, in the cow's urine, right? It's a core belief that they have that they were conditioned to believe. So here I would go, ew, I'm not going to wash my hands in, in a cow's urine, Right. Where in their culture, that's what from birth, that's what they've been taught to believe and understand. And it's a core value. So all, all I'm saying that for is to understand that everything that you know and believe today has been taught to you by somebody else who was taught to believe that also. So we have to understand that it's time. To stop, think and pay attention to what we believe and really research it and see, is it valid? In anything, and I'm not saying that's wrong. You may you may have a ton of things that are that are great, but I, I know for me personally, there's a lot of things that I believe that I that, that was like, okay, this is this is good. And then as I started to study and learn and grow and heal and meditate and all these things that I've done, I was like, man, that's that's not right. <laughs> that's wrong. Like some of these things that I've been taught are are lies. And and, and you know, and, and there's a lot of stuff that comes from our parents. And I, and I don't want to say it's a lie. The, the the whole thing of it is a lie. But my parents didn't lie to me. It's what they knew. We teach our kids what we know. That's it, right? And so often we take things and we just believe them. I say all that to you to understand that everything you've been taught today, everything you that you know today, you've been taught. Even if you went seeking it, right? I mean, the new stuff that you're seeking and you're reading and you're looking and you're reading a book, you've 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 somebody taught you. Somebody else wrote it. Pay attention to what you're thinking, and know that you have a powerful story. Because too many of us have been taught by people a lot of times that we love that we're not worthy. And even if they sit, they're not sitting there pointing at some, some people do, unfortunately, are told they're worth nothing and they're not worthy. But even if somebody's not pointing at you, telling you you're not worthy, there are things that are said, right? I talk to people all the time about different subjects and they'll go, that's not true, you're crazy. And they'll disagree and everything else. And I don't argue with people, but being young and somebody telling you that, then you believe it, right? One of my beliefs growing up was that because of the life I lived, being incarcerated, being on the streets, all the dumb, wild, crazy, just lostness that I was living in, I always thought everybody was smarter than me. I thought everybody was smarter than me, and I wouldn't even talk sometimes in conversations and in groups because I, I, I felt like I was stupid. They were smarter than me, so why, why would I even intertwine? Why would I even t talk about my ideas or what I thought about anything? Because if I know it, this is what used to come to me. If I know this, everybody must know this, so I'm not going to speak. I'm not going to say it. And then as I kind of started to grow and learn and understand some things, I would see misconceptions in people and what they were saying. And I wouldn't I wouldn't agree. And I'd say, well, have you ever thought about this? And I'd, I'd, I'd throw something out there. And I, I remember I, I could remember this like it was yesterday. And this was many years ago. It was a group of like five people. And it was actually in an internship I was doing with the church. And I said something. And usually I don't say anything. And I said something. And they all looked at me and they said, wow, I never thought about that. And I started to hear that over and over when I would when I would give my opinions, share my wisdom that I had gained. I'd never even thought about that. And I started to think, they'd never even thought about that? I just assumed that they knew, <laughs> that everybody knew these things, because who am I, right? I'm telling you that you have power and that you have wisdom that only you have and that people need. Everybody here watching this, whether you're live on, on, on a social media or if you're in this Zoom call, you have wisdom that people need to hear. You need to share your story. My whole platform, Tag Talks, Transparency, Acceptance, Growth, Your Story Sales, Heal the Boy. Everything that I do is around sharing a personal story and helping other people heal with your wisdom that's worthy of being heard. You are powerful. You are strong. You are light. You are love. But we've been taught to have fear that nobody wants to hear what we're going to do. And I can't make money and I can't be successful sharing my story. Who wants to hear what I have to say? That's the lie. If you think that for a second, change it, shift it.
right? And wh whether you join us at, at, at this event in Los Angeles or you speak at the event, this is what I want you to learn and want you to understand. And this is why I bring in powerful people to teach and train. I don't know if you guys know, we, we're, we're bringing in the celebrity Forbes Riley. I just got off the phone with another guy who's been in all kinds of really cool TV shows and he's going to come and give us his, his inspiration. He's been, he's been inspiration. He's, he's, uh, he's been in a lot of movies, um, with, with all the big stars. He has a lot of parts and stuff. He's not like the major movie guy, but uh, he does a lot of really cool stuff. I was watching his clips. I'll start sharing them when I start promoting who he is and what we're doing with him. But I bring these people in and I come and I do these events myself to share and inspire you to know who you are. Another thing I tell people all the time is remember who you were before society told you who to be. The first seven years of my life, I lived with my mother, my father, and my siblings. When my mother came to the marriage, she had two kids. When my mother, my father came to the marriage, he had one, and then together they had me. So we were a, a wonderful family back in the 70s in San Jose, California. Does any, anybody know California at all? The Bay Area, Silicon Valley, right? Um, if, if you know that area, there are millions and millions of people, and you can buy a eight, 900 square foot house for $2 million. <laughs> that's, what it's, that's what it's turned into. But when I lived there growing up in the 70s, it was all fields and orchards. It was cherries, apricots, walnuts, figs. It was a beautiful farmland, right? And, and honestly, that's how my family landed in that. Originally, my family is from Mexico. They migrated into Texas. And then my grandparents followed the crops around. And that's where they worked and made an income, right? And they migrated to Santa Clara County, which is San Jose area. And then they just planted there and grew. My grandma worked in factories and so on and so forth. And, and, and we just built our family from there. So I'm third generation, but, but it was, it was farmland back then. It was beautiful, right? It was a beautiful place, beautiful kids, beautiful family, just fun, right? I, I started this with remember who you were before society told you to be. So for the first seven years of my life, everything was wonderful. And the good thing was that I learned what love was. Because if you understand psychology and, and how our minds work and how we grow and how we shift at certain ages, the first seven years of a child's life is the core of who they are. It's the core and it sticks with you. So at the age of seven, when I was separated from my father, it broke me. I didn't understand, right? The, 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 the subtitle of my book, The Importance of Understanding and Expressing Your Emotions. It broke me and I didn't know what emotions were. I didn't know how to express them. So I held it all in. Pain, anger, confusion, sadness, dark, just depression, anxiety. I had all of these things in this little seven-year-old body that I had no idea how to express. The good thing is that I did learn love prior to that. So when I got lost, and I started doing drugs at nine, right? Started getting in gangs and had my kid, my first child when I was 13, and then got incarcerated at 14 and would spend the next, the majority of the next 10 years in some form of a facility taken from my mother and so on and so forth, ending up in prison. I still had the core of love in there. It was hidden. It was hidden. But it was still there and I had to find it. I had to remember who I was before society beat the crap out of me and made me into this, this person who was lost, right? I don't ever ask anybody. Yes, I was 13 when I had my first job. Um, I, I don't ever ask anybody. And I never, when I'm talking about my story, don't ever feel sorry for me for the life that I lived. Don't ever feel sorry for me for being in prison because people see me today and they have no idea unless I tell them. They go, oh my God, you were in prison? Jeez. And it's like, no, I'll tell you what, back then I was lost and I belonged there. They didn't send me there for no reason, <laughs> right? I was lost. I was on the streets. I did stupid things. Um, I lived in a fog and, and, and that was the life, the alter ego, I called it, that was protecting this little boy who was broken. And this alter ego would do anything to protect him. He would fight with rage and he would get drunk and try and hide and, and just, just hide the pain that I was carrying, right? Going back to the emotions, do you know that emotions are energy? Emotions, energy in motion. When you don't express your dark emotions, you're compressing them, you're holding them in. What happens when you compress any type of energy? It explodes. I was very quick to anger. I was always angry. I was always fighting. I was always doing stupid things. It's, it's so unfortunate that it's so easy to express joy emotions. Why is it so easy to go, yay, this is fun. I'm at a, my, oh, this, my favorite team just won. What a, and we express and we have all this fun and we let all this energy out. We're, we're expressing the energy, raising our hands, chop, cheering, and all these things. But when something bad happens, we hold it in. Ah! And then it shifts us. There's chemicals, literally, from our brain that goes into our stomach that makes us sick. We can become physically sick and angry and all of these things. When you're living in that, your lessons are coming. You don't know it, right? We, we, Steve Jobs said, when you look back, you can connect the dots, not looking forward. You look back and you go, 
Wow, I, I get why that happened. I understand that now. We can't look forward and go, well, these things are going to happen to me, and this is what I'm going to learn from them. Unfortunately, that doesn't work that way. I wish it did. So you take what you've learned. You remember who you were before society told you who to be. You understand that every challenge that you've been through is for you to grow and heal. And then you take that wisdom and you help other people. That's the most fulfilling career life you can have. You know, my, my, I don't talk about, I have, you know, my company is this tag talks, obviously, but it's an umbrella under my entity and my entity is UL seminars. And what that stands for is um, the ultimate life. To me, the ultimate life is to be able to serve and help people change their lives, improve their lives with my wisdom and get paid for it. You can get paid for your wisdom. People will pay for your past to improve their future. That's what my entire company is about. If you want to know what TAG is about, you want to know why I do what I do, in a nutshell, I just I just told you where my passion came from. And here's here's what's interesting. Being incarcerated and you know, there, there's 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 good and there's bad cops, there's good and there's bad judges, there's good and there's bad, you know, guards that are in, in, in jails and all that kind of stuff. And I experienced all of it. But when I started working with kids, as much as a as young age and being lost, I didn't like authority, right? I, if they were a cop, I automatically didn't like you. That's just kind of the lifestyle. But when I when I got older and I learned and I grew from this stuff, I was working in juvenile hall, volunteer as a juvenile hall with kids. And it was a guard in juvenile hall who helped me get to where I am today. And, and he probably doesn't even know. I don't even remember what he looks like or even remember their person's name. But if they ever see this or see something that I'm doing, I want them to know that they helped me because I'm sitting there working with these kids and I'm teaching them with my heart. I'm training them. I'm trying to get them to understand the stuff that I've learned so that they don't end up in prison. So they don't feel, act and do the things that I did. I'm trying to plant these seeds in them and grow them. And he's standing there because there's always a guard standing there when I'm working you know, in a facility. And uh, I take a little bit of break and he goes, how much do you get paid to do this? And I said, I don't get paid to do this. I'm a volunteer. And he goes, you know why you don't get paid to do this? And I said, why? He goes, because you don't ask. And I was like, what? And he's like, they pay people to come in here and do exactly what you do and half of what you do, honestly. He goes, you need to ask them. And I said, I don't want to get paid. I just want to help these people. And I get this from my clients all of the time, this beginning clients. And this is why I'm telling you how worthy you are. And it's okay to get paid to help people. I said, I don't want to get paid. I just want to help these kids. And he said, it's okay to get paid to help people. Man, he says, have you written a book? And at the time I didn't, I said, no. He says, whatever you're teaching in this classroom right here, you need to write it in your book. This first book I ever wrote, look at this. It's a very easy read. I wrote this for kids in juvenile hall and then it just blew up because so many people needed it. The impact of just heal the boy and the man will appear. I didn't realize how many people understood that and felt that. So I wrote a book. So I teach people now, whatever you speak on stage needs to be in a book. If you have a book written, Whatever you wrote, I hope you're passionate about. And whatever you wrote in that book, you should be speaking about on stage. And then guess what happens? When you combine your stage time and your powerful message with a book and a powerful message, people find you. They see the credibility, the authority that you have. They've read, they've listened to you and the wisdom that you have. And they want to hire you to be their coach. I also meet a lot of people that go, I don't want to be a coach. And I go, okay, you want to be a speaker? You want to have your books? Let's do it. But guess what? They always end up being the coach. You know why? Because if you're passionate about something and you have the wisdom that you want to share and you want to serve and people are coming to you and they're asking you for help, you're going to help them. That's just how it works. And when they're coming to you like that, it's okay to charge them. It's okay to make money, right? Monetize your message. There's all these terms and things that are out there. And, I, and there's a truth to it. And I believe and I've learned over my life to invest in myself, get a mentor, and work with somebody who's doing what I want to do. So if you have a message and you want to share it, you need to come to our event. We, we, we give you professional videos. We give you professional pictures. We market you. If you already have a coaching program, we let you market it and put it, bring your banners to our events. If you just want to attend, we teach you everything that, that I'm talking about right now. We teach you how to do it yourself. There's so many benefits to, to starting off 2024 and coming to one of our events. Whether you attend, come and meet Forbes Riley and these stars and these influencers that we bring in. Or just come and learn. Everything we teach, you can walk out of the three-day event and do it yourself. You can implement it. You can do it. And you can start your business teaching and helping people. That's all I want you to do is serve others. That's what our events are all about. You need help, we'll help you. 
go through those three days, you take your notes, you take it, you put into action, you will have success. If you need help, we help you. We have a program for that too. So I want to get back to remembering who you were before society told you who to be. And I want you to know that all of this stuff that I'm talking about is for you to understand that you can do it and that people need you. Do you know people need what you have? Do you know people need what you have? I hope you do. I want you to understand that today. I want you to understand that right now. I didn't, I didn't know that. I didn't believe that for many, many years. I told you I, I would just sit there quiet because everybody knew what I know. Who am I? I'm this kid who spent started doing drugs at nine and got out of prison when he was 24 years old. But it was all wisdom gained. Everything I've experienced is wisdom. When I coach somebody, I didn't read a book and go, well, this book says that you may feel like this because of this, or you may act this way because it says this. I, I, I can say that because I lived it. I experienced it. I know it, and I learned it. And I'll tell you, there's nothing, I'm not putting down books either. There's, there's a lot of stuff I learned out of books. I mean, uh, when I'll tell you what changed my life, okay, in a nutshell. When I got out of prison, I wanted to change, first of all, and I made the decision to change. Okay, talk about a decision. Some of you are thinking about coming to this event. Some of you are thinking about speaking at this event. And there's all these reasons that you're finding not to. Well, I'm going to go here. Well, I'm going to go there. I don't have the money. I don't have the time. All of these reasons why you're making excuses not to do what you need to do or want to do. And then where are you going to be? You're going to be in the exact same spot that you've been. And it's 2024, the beginning of the year. AI is killing jobs. The economy is dropping. You need to learn to use your voice to help serve people and make an income. The, one of the stories that I want to tell you is the my my first coach, and I was going to tell you something else right now, and it, it kind of it, it's it's on the side. But the first coach that I ever hired that I ever hired was a real estate coach, and this was back in two thousand, the year two thousand two zero zero zero. And uh, he, uh, I went to a seminar back in two thousand. I wasn't speaking or anything like that, and I went to a seminar, and he was up there, and there was like a thousand people in the audience, maybe two thousand, and he mesmerized the crowd with what he talked about. And I was just like, oh, I, I want to do what he what he's talking about, investing in real estate and all this stuff. And, and he talked about helping people, too. That was the inspiration, because that's what it's about. When you, when you get to the core of life, it's helping other people who are in pain and need to heal. And uh, I went through this whole thing, and I started to, to go through all these emotions. I was going to go back and buy his package. Back in 2000, I, it was a $3,000 program. I didn't have the money. Um, I had a family and the whole thing. Kids were young. I didn't have the money, but I, 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 I got hooked by what he was talking about. And I really wanted to do it. And I went to the back of the room and I was about to buy his package. And I said, no, I decided to say no. And I walked out. I walked out and he happened to be sitting there outside of the conference. And I looked at him. He was sitting there. I was like, holy crap. You, you, you see these guys on stage and they disappear. And I walked up to him and I was so full of energy. Talk about built up energy. I started yelling at him like, are you for real? Is this real stuff? Because I, uh, uh, and I was just like throwing up on him, basically, just, just yelling and screaming at him. And the guy sitting next to him was like, hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. Calm down, right? And I looked at the guy, and the guy, his name was James Smith. If any of you go to his home, he's a wonderful man, oh God. And he looked at me, and he's like, what's your name? And I said, Raul. And he got out a pen and a paper, he wrote down his phone number, and he handed it to me, and he said, hey, man, give me a call tomorrow, I'm going to help you. He goes, well, but you got to go buy the program. And I just kind of looked at him, and, and his, his buddy looked at me, and he said, hey, he, that's his number. And if he told you he's going to help you, he will. And I said, okay. And I trusted him. And I went and I didn't tell my wife and I spent $3,000 that I didn't have. <laughs> and, I, and, and I was worried. And, I, and honestly, I don't think that I told her for, for a couple of months. Um, so I called this guy the next day, just like he told me to. I bought the program. I was excited. I bought it, nervous, scared, but I did it. I took the action. I bought the program and I, uh, I called him the next day and he didn't answer. And I left him a message and I thought, He's never going to call me back. He, he, he's not going to do it. 10 minutes later, he called me. And I said, oh, hey, James, what's happening? I said, I said, my name is Raul. You, you, he, I remember, I remember. He goes, you, you, and I had told him about a truck that I had and all this stuff. He's like, you have a truck and you work with youth. And he told, you know, he remembered me. And he goes, here's what I want you to do. I'm going to help you make your first real estate investment. He goes, I want you to call this number. And I want you to tell them James Smith said to give you two of these deals. And it was a, it was a condo conversion that was being, it was a condos being converted 
um, or no, no, it was a whole condo conversion, but it was hotel being converted into condos on Myrtle Beach in South Carolina, North Carolina, wherever it's at. So I said, okay. So I called, right? I called uh, and the lady, it was a lady. And, and I said, hey, James Smith said, you need to give me two of these deals. And she goes, sorry, they're all sold out. And I go, what? I go, James Smith said that you, you should give me the, one of these deals or two of these deals. And she said, she said, they're sold out. I'm sorry. And I go, I don't understand because I just talked to James and he said to call you. And she said this very condescending, like she didn't believe me. She goes, James Smith told you to call me and to give you two deals. And I said, yeah. And she goes, I'm going to call him right now. And I go, go ahead. <laughs> you know, I had just talked to him. So she hangs up, she calls him, and then she calls me back and she goes, oh, he did. Okay, I'm going to give you two of these deals. And in short, on those two deals, within, I think it was four to six months, I made 150 grand because I took the action. I looked at this guy, I knew he knew what he was doing. And he had told me that at one point. He goes, Raul, do you believe that I know what I'm doing? And I said, yeah. He goes, do you believe that I can help you be successful? Do you, yeah. I said, do you trust me? He said, do you trust me? And I said, well, I, I kind of don't know you, but I trust that you know what you're doing. I can see how successful you are. He said, then just do what I say. Don't think about it. Don't get in your head. Just do it because I'm doing what you want to do. And that's what I did. And, and, and in that, so, so I, I got out, I got out of prison when I was 24 at that time I was 30. So by the time I was 31, 32, I was a millionaire listening to following what somebody else told me how to do because they knew how to do it. I didn't have to think about it. I did what he said. That was it. That was my first coach I've ever hired. And I don't even know if they were called coaches back then. I think they were called mentors back in 2000. I think Tony, Tony Robbins coined the term coach. I think some, sometime in this, in the, in the 2000s. We have to believe in who we are and that we can get things done. We have to work with people who are doing what we want to do. It's called folding time. I can start here and I can do it all myself and figure it out and go to here. And this will be for me, that was many, many years trying to figure it out on my own. Or I can find somebody who's doing what I want to do and jump up to them and go, show me how to do this. The first thing you got to do is believe in yourself. The first thing you got to do is take the action. The first thing you got to do is show up. The first thing you got to do is stop making excuses because those excuses are limiting beliefs that you've been taught over your life. Whether they pounded them into you or you've just picked them up from different places. Has anybody here had people put them down? Put them down over and over and over again. I think we've all had that. You know, um, I was in a very long relationship um and and i'm not saying anything bad about this person i still love them in you know in my heart and wish them all the best but i was in a very long relationship um many 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 years we have kids together my ex-wife and uh she didn't realize it and i don't blame her but she used to put me down every single day every day she would say something negative towards me anything i would say she'd say shut up she'd say yeah that doesn't make any sense i mean all the time she was just hammering me hammering me hammering me, hammering me, putting me down and I don't say this to say anything bad about her. I don't want you guys to, to, to take that. I just want you to understand that we get hammered sometimes and we start to believe that about ourselves. We just receive it and we start to believe it about ourselves. And that's another part of not speaking, not saying things, not you know believing about us. Well, this person tells me this every day. It sinks in. So this is a whole other subject, but what you listen to matters. What you watch on TV matters. The music you listen to matters. What you feed your brain matters. Start listening to people like Bob Proctor, Tony Robbins, Les Brown. You want to watch something on TV? Get away from the reality shows, man. Get away from the news. <laughs> I, I cut off my TV like 10 years ago. I do not watch the news. How I know if something's happening that's really, really important is it'll start to show up on social media and then I'll look at it and I'll do my own research on it. I don't just listen to the news and let them tell me what to think because the media will tell you what to think. Have you seen those memes? They're funny, I think. And like there, there are two people standing there and the, and, the, and the girl is asking the guy or vice versa. And they said, hey, what are you what are you upset about today? And they're going, I don't know. The news hasn't told me yet. <laughs> That's a reality, man. That's a reality. I'm sorry. That's a reality. Take control. Remember who you were before society told you who to be. When you were a kid, you had fun, you loved, you enjoyed. You can do anything in the world. You didn't care what anybody thought. I love to see children when I'm at the mall or just out at the park, whatever it is, and you see these kids dancing and jumping around and just having fun. They can care less what anybody thinks. What if we all lived that way? 
What if we all just had fun and didn't care, right? Jumping around, jumping, and somebody's going to look, look at that adult guy dancing around having fun in the park. If somebody says that to me or you and you're enjoying your life, who has the problem? <laughs> Not you. You're having fun. They're the one that has the problem. They're the ones who need some coaching. <laughs> You see people get pissed off on the road all the time. I see it all the time. I don't understand it. Why are people so aggressive on the road? I mean, you can't even drive. You don't even got to be in front of them. You just drive past people and they get mad. It's really weird. But that's all the stuff that I've worked through and the stuff that I love to teach us about the energy that I was talking about. We're so people are so filled up. As soon as any little thing happens, they go crazy. You have wisdom. That what I'm sharing with you is my wisdom and why I have this company and what I do. You have wisdom. You could be on a webinar just like this, offering your coaching program inspiring people. I don't have, I, this is not a, a power, there's nothing wrong with PowerPoint presentation, but this is not a PowerPoint presentation of me saying, A, B, C, D, 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 D. All I'm doing is telling you guys my story, why I do what I do. And then I invite you to come and join me so that you can do the same thing. That's it. Can you do that? I want to see how you guys raise your hand. Can you do that? <laughs> yes, you can do that. And if you don't think you can, then you need to come because I'll show you how to do it. Right? What are, what are the three points? Let me bring up those three points that I, that I put here. Um, share your story, make an impact, and make money. That's what I put out for this webinar, for this Zoom call. Share your story, make an impact, and make money. That's everything that I've been talking about. I'm telling you to you in story form. I'm trying to inspire you to know, not to think, but to know a couple of things. One, AI can be scary if you don't know how to utilize it. If you don't take it and utilize it, it's going to hurt a lot of people. I have an amazing friend today, and he's probably going to watch this, so I'm not putting anybody down. He's, he's a great friend of mine for many, many years, and I brought up AI to him today, and he goes, oh, AI is just a fad. It's going to go away. And I just thought, man, that's, that's what they said about the internet. <laughs> that's what I said. That's what they said about the internet. Literally, when the internet started, it was all of the articles. Ah, it's a fad. It's going to go away. AI is going to eliminate Google. AI is going to eliminate the internet. It's a whole new world. It's already eliminate doctors, psychologists, insurance. It's eliminating all kinds of jobs. You're going to call for, for a psychologist, and it's going, to be, it's going to be a bot who knows everything more than the average psychologist. And you're going to tell it your problems. And it's going to talk to you like I'm talking to you right now. And it's going to have every answer and concern emotionally that you need. Is that scary? That's a good thing, but it's scary because it eliminate jobs. When AI first came out, I read a whole bunch of reports, psychology reports on AI. And it actually said that it would actually help humanity with emotional intelligence. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I'll tell you the people... And this is not an insult. I'll tell you the people who are fighting against AI. One, people who just don't understand it, like what I just mentioned, who don't get it, who have no idea what, what it's capable of. I mean, even what I use it for is like a little tiny fraction of a fraction of what it's capable of. Right? I use it for business. And it's great. It, it helps a lot. But there's so much more. But uh, it's people who don't understand it or don't want to understand it. And then it's people like, like publishers and psychologists and these people that it's replacing, they're fighting it because they're going, wait a second, you can't do that. You know, I, I, I was uh, debating with the publisher the other day because, you know, I, I put people in books like with Les Brown. I publish people in books and help them write their own books and stuff. And I was talking to a publisher and he said, you can't use AI. There's, there's a lawsuit right now against that. You can't use AI to, to help you write your books. And I said, why not? And they said, because it's it's a. Uh, it, what is what is it called? Uh, plagiarism. It's plagiarism. It's not your writing. It's not your words. You have to write your words. And I said, what is a ghostwriter? And they're like, well, it's somebody who writes your book for you. I said, well, what's the difference? You, you, you think Tony Robbins sit, sat down and wrote any of his books? <laughs> no, sorry. He gives them the concept, the idea. Here's what who I am and what I want to teach. Okay, and somebody so, writes yeah. it for him. AI is the same thing. I only say that to say that there are industries that are being disrupted and shut down because of AI. And it's not going to stop. It's going to get worse and worse and worse. Or better and better and better if you're utilizing it. We're teaching people how to take their message and monetize it. We're teaching you how to share your story, how to make an impact, change lives. It's the most important thing for me. And then how to make money doing it. I want you guys to come and join us.
February 22nd through 24th in Los Angeles, LAX, easy to fly into. I mentioned it earlier for those of you who weren't on earlier. It is a shuttle. Thank you, Megan. <laughs> it is a shuttle ride, three-minute shuttle ride from LAX to the Westin Hotel where we're having this event. Stay at the hotel, come downstairs, come to the venue. There's restaurants, bars, everything that you need right there. We're bringing in celebrity, Forbes Riley. She's amazing. We're going to do a couple of events with her this year. I think it's going to be great. She's also an expert teacher and trainer in sales, how to sell from stage. She sold literally, I think I looked at the number the other day, it was like a billion dollars in sales. She used to she used to be on one of those TV shows where they sell on TV and all that. Uh, she's been on movies. And I mean, she's, she's amazing. And she's, she's spoken at one of my events, I think four or five years ago. And she was one of the biggest impacts we had. She would bring people on stage, or she did. She brought people on stage, and she worked through their, their traumas and their darkness and all these things that I'm telling you about. She's amazing. You, you don't want to miss her, especially live in person, to get to meet her and shake her hand and, and work with her. So um, I got into who I am and inspiration of why I do what I do and why I want you to do the same thing. I'm not here to compete with you. I'm, I'm here to help you do what I do with your message. I want you to put on your own events. I want you to get people in there. I want you to teach them what you know, right? I know somebody right now who is like an, an NLP expert and does a lot of uh, like regression work, like going back into your childhood and healing from your childhood and all those types of things. And I said, teach people how to do that, right? If I teach you how to help other people, I'm reaching millions. If I teach you how to do what I do with your message and you go help a thousand people, I helped you help a thousand people. And then they're going to teach people. And there's going to be another thousand, another thousand, another thousand. And we literally change the world. There's a darkness. I think you all know that. That's here right now. It's a darkness in the world. And we need people to step up. We need people to step up and share their wisdom. We need the people to know you're powerful. The lie is that nobody wants to hear what you have to say. The lie is you're not worthy. The lie is that you're not enough. The truth is you are enough. You're worthy and people need what you have. So stop. I'm going to be straight up. Stop making excuses. And you can argue with me say, this is not an excuse. This is true. And this is this and that. But I'll tell you what, nine out of 10 things that people tell me why they're not doing what they want to do is an excuse. Nine out of 10. There are some valid things that happen. I know somebody that would be at the last two of my events, but has a physical illness and has been in the hospital. I believe that one. <laughs> That's not an excuse. That's a truth. But we have excuses. I don't have the time. I don't want to go all the way to California. I got people flying in internationally. I mean, my buddy right here, Neil's coming in from Jamaica. We got some people coming in from India. Canada, not so far. We got people coming in from all over the place. I have somebody who, and, and, and I share some of this stuff because I talk to hundreds of people all the time over these events. I have somebody, I, the last event we just did, we just finished one up in Dallas. And I had somebody that, that messaged me and said, hey, tell me when you're going to be in California because I will come. I can't make it to Dallas, but when you're in California, you let me know because I live in California and I'm going to come. So I called them up and I go, hey, we're coming to California. We're going to be in LAX, Los Angeles area. And this person said, oh, I live like an hour from there. When are you going to be in my town? <laughs> and I was like, you, you got to make an effort, my friend. You, you, that, that's an excuse. Well, I don't, I don't drive. That's an excuse. There's Uber. There's a taxi. There's friends. I mean, there, there's, there's lots of things that we can do. That, 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 it's an excuse. And I'm sorry, and I'm not insulting this person. If you're watching this, I love you. You're amazing. Um, but it's an excuse. I'll tell you straight up. That's what, that's what coaches do. They tell you your BS. Right. Come to California and I'll be there. Okay. We're in California an hour from you, an hour away. I got people flying in from all over the world because they believe in themselves. They've realized they have a story and they want to help other people. If you have a, a, a dire need and understanding, a calling to help other people. Once you believe in yourself, you'll do whatever it takes. All right. I've been on my soapbox for about 45 minutes now, trying to help serve and inspire you to know. You don't have to come with me to learn this stuff, but you need to. Why? Because I've, I'm, I'm doing this through experience of my own personal life, and I'm passionate about it. There are a lot of platforms that teach speaking, and guess what? They all come to us. John Maxwell, speaker. I love John Maxwell. John Maxwell has an amazing program. He does not put you on stage and get you a video and pictures and promote you like we do. Les Brown, I have a contract with Les Brown. He has a great program. 
He does not put you on stage. I got people who come from TEDx all the time, right? And then before it's like, oh, you're similar to TEDx, but TEDx this and TEDx that. I love TEDx too. My 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 personal goal is selling my company to TED, not TEDx, but TED. And there's a big difference in those two if you don't know what they are. Do some research. Um, but I got TEDx speakers coming. Why? Because TEDx gives you no control over your content. They may not even post the video that they shoot of you at the TEDx event and they own your talk. You sign a paper saying they own your talk and you can't do it anymore on other platforms. And they tell you what you can talk about. They're not going to let you talk about God and healing and growth. I'm not going to let you share your wisdom. I'll tell you that. So what we do is different. We're not the same. Our branding is three red letters. That's the connection. Other than that, I want you to be seen. I want you to be found. I want you to be inspired. And I want to work with you to get your message out there globally. How easy is it globally now? Look at the people that are on this call right now. There's people on social media right now watching from all over the world. World dominance, yes. World positive dominance. <laughs> I think of world dominance, I think of those cartoons where those guys are like, I'm going to take over the world. <laughs> that little mouse, I think he says it. Anyhow, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open up to some questions because uh, you can see I'm passionate about this. And this is why I do my own calls and, and, and work with people directly because nobody else can share my passion than I have to help you. So I do my best to get on all of these calls and, and to, to serve and to talk and to answer your questions and the whole thing. So here we are. It is 147. How can I help you? What questions do you have? What help do you need to get to Tag Talks? Feel free to unmute yourself and fire away. I'm going to look on social media while we're doing that to see if anybody has questions that I can answer. Nobody has any questions. <laughs> no, good. no, no question. Good, no question. <laughs> <laughs> I've answered them all. I am the expert. Yeah, exactly. I think <laughs> it's not really a question, but I have to thank you, man. Wow, that's uh, powerful. If I wasn't even thinking about going, coming, mm -hmm. no, I'm not looking to upgrade. Let me there put you it that way. <laughs> yeah, that's right. When upgrade. we talked, you were talking about that. Way. I'm looking to upgrade. Then. I want you to upgrade. And since you're coming internationally, call me Call me on the side. I'll yeah, that's the point. I'll, I mean, I'll, help you out. I'll help you Yeah, out. I'm looking at upgrading now. All right. So I just so put the definitely. Link. Good. I'm glad yes. you are. I've been, I reached out to your friend, your, your assistant too, Charnel. I uh, sent her some details about this event. Um, and then uh, I just put the, the link in the messenger. I mean, in the chat right here for those of you who were on yes. uh, this call. And then I'm going to put it into uh, into the groups and all that just right after we finish up here. Um, Mr. Mo, how can I help you, my friend? Hey, Raul, you got like uh, different tiers again for the, the LA uh, event? Do I have different what? Like tiers, like different price for different. Yeah, to to attend the event, to attend three full days, um, talks and training, it's only $97. And you get okay. to bring somebody with you. So you get to bring a guest. I always tell people, bring a family member who needs some to, to learn and, and, and grow uh, mentally, physically, or in business. Um, or bring a colleague, right? Bring bring a potential client, a colleague, something like that, that you know that they can grow from this. Because uh, we do do a lot of amazing teaching and training. Uh, the second tier is the guest speaker spot. What the guest speaker spot entails is a seven minute of stage time, professional video edited for you, raw footage, professional pictures of you on stage, three full days of talks and training, and you get to bring two people with you for the 12, it's 1297. So professional video and all of that, I was talking to Forge about it today, and everybody always tells me, this, man, you need to charge more. And I just raised it for 2024. <laughs> and you need to charge more just for a video and content and all of this three days of training and everything that's going on, celebrities and all that. They tell me I need to charge more. So who knows what we're going to do in the next event. But that's only $12.97. And then we have what we call our VIP authority building packages. So with all of these packages too, by the way, we add you to our landing pages, to our websites. We create graphics for you. We promote you as a speaker. You're seen, you're found, and all of the stuff that we do, right, as a, as a Tag Talk speaker. Uh, then we have our uh, VIP package, which is a 20-minute talk, which, which I do recommend because a 20-minute talk, you can take and chop up into a whole bunch of 30-second, 60-second clips and then blast it all over social media too, right? It's about being found and being seen. That's my goal for you, your wisdom to be shown. So it's a 20-minute talk, professional video pictures, raw footage, the whole thing, graphics. We promote you as a VIP speaker. Uh, right now, we're in the process of making one-on-one -on -one graphics for our VIP speakers and our celebrities. So this will be cool for more promotions to get out there. We give them to you, all right? And you can promote them and we promote it. 
And then in addition to the three days in there, you get to bring three people with you. And, and when you're a VIP speaker, I always tell you to bring potential clients because when you have the, the VIP, you get two talks. One is the 20 minute live at this event with the celebrity. And then you also get the, the one hour online summit where you get to sell. That's the other thing I had to mention. No speakers sell from stage, but the VIPs have a booth. Okay. You get a booth. You get to dress up our event with your banners. You can bring your books, your coaching programs, whatever you have. You tell your story. You tell them who you are, what you do, why you're passionate about it, just like I did for you today. And then you say, if you want more information, come and see me at my booth. And then from your booth, you can sell them whatever you want. If they, if they need what you have and they will, then you offer them what you have. Right. And at minimum, you collect their information so that you can email them and get them on webinars and so on and so forth. What I do, do what I do. So you get the you get the 20 minute talk, you get the one hour online summit where you do get to offer a product on the online summit and you're co-speaking there with Les Brown. So now you're marketed like this time you're being marketed with Forbes Riley, the online summit, you get a one hour talk, you're being marketed with Les Brown and it's just continued building of authority and credibility. And then, like I said, you get booths at the events, professional pictures, graphics, uh, the VIP, you get a couple of one on one calls with me where we help you and make sure your talk is prepared and get together. We have an online course. It's about 10 videos. And it's a lot of what I talked about today, but it really tells you how to set up and and uh, and put your talk together in addition to me talking with you. So you get that as part of the package also. So there's a lot of a lot of great stuff. Those And that package is 3,497 bucks. So you get the two opportunities with celebrities, longer tops, opportunities to uh, to offer a product on the online summit. Um, and then you continue with us, you know, throughout the year. And you, you're allowed to come to any back, back to any of our events that you want to attend, that you want to bring colleagues to. You can show people that you've been on these stages with these various celebrities. We bring in a lot of celebrities. You know what? If you guys want, let me bring up, oops, let me bring up the landing page real quick. I'll show you for those of you who haven't seen it. I didn't even think about that. I'll go, I'll go this real quickly too, because I, I talked about everything, but I'll show it to you. Ta-da. So here's the landing page. Um, this year's theme is your story sells, right? We're talking about sharing stories. Um, last year's theme was take action and grow. Uh, this is the, a little bit about the event. Has everybody seen this video? Let me show you guys this video. I'm going to show you guys. More celebrities that we brought up. Struggle is guaranteed. The success is not. Burn that into your psyche. The struggle is guaranteed. The success is not. So you better be doing things every day to make you feel some kind of way about yourself. First, we have to accept it, right? We accept the challenges that we've been through, maybe the traumas that we've been through. We understand them. They were transparent in them. Healing, that's the key in this transparency, acceptance and growth. It was healing. I had understood the science, the biological, the psychological, but this was the healing part, the spiritual part that we all need. Yay. So you, you can see in there kind of the way we set up our events, all the banners and things that we do for our clients. And we, we always make sure we, especially if you have books and stuff, we always say, hey, support our, our authors. Go, go, go grab a book. Go talk to them. Take some pictures. That's all more marketing for you. Um, this is kind of how we're running this year quarterly. We just finished up a five day challenge. I was lucky enough, fortunate enough to be in Cabo and I ran the five day challenge from there, me and Brandon. Um, and then that led into this live in person event that we're having. Um, and then from there, we're going to do your story sales. This is the online summit with Les Brown. And then this is one of the programs that we do with people to work with them for the year. These are the various celebrities, obviously Les Brown, Forbes Riley's coming again. Krista Mayshore is a real estate guru. Alex Mendozian is an online guy. Uh, Kevin Harrington, everybody knows him, and Mr. Tom Bilyeu. These are the people that we brought out. We continue to bring out celebrities. So what we do with our VIP speakers and, and our guest speakers is we, we march you here on our page, right? So all these graphics that you're seeing, we also send them to you. And so you can market it. And then we put you on all our, 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 our groups. We put you in our Instagrams. We, we put you on our TikToks. We put you all over the place. And we help market you to be seen. Um, here's a quick testimonial. Oh, uh, Not only did I get a chance to speak, but I got a chance to be heard. And I got to see the stories of many people around the world and their impact that they're making in the lives of many people. Being at a live event, getting an opportunity to challenge myself by standing on stage and feeling part of a community. Um, just like any event, you walk in, you're kind of hoping for the best, but you're prepared for the worst. And to be perfectly honest, what I ended up finding with it was an amazing group of people who are here to support each other 
and learn from each other. About the connection, the true connection that you can feel. And when you have love in yourself, you can spread anywhere in the world. No matter the situation, no matter the limit, the limits. You come in the room and, you know, in a lot of events that you go to, you're thinking, oh, you know, will I fit in, whatnot. It's not that way in this room. There's such a warm and genuine feel with the people that are around you because the heart mission is to share stories. Aside from being able to share my story and to hear other people's, I feel like I had transparency, acceptance, and growth just within this room. And it came really cram-packed with a ton of information and um, knowledge that I was lacking. So it really actually delivered a lot for me in my life. I got more than what was expected away with a smile on my face folks and if you walk away with a smile on your face that means they've done you right and they treated you right and it's worth the payment and worth the money i felt like i was heard and i felt like that not only did i receive i felt like i had a piece of me to share with other people that were looking for the same thing i was looking for raul and brandon provide especially the knowledge and the people who are here their love and their their wisdom that they just continue to pour and they're willing to help. I had several breakthroughs that will completely change the course of the next 10 to 15 years of my life. Uh, way more than I expected. I resisted coming here. I knew about this for quite some time and I resisted very hard this event. And then last week went, okay, I hear you, God, I'm coming. My mind went from, I deserve this much to it's, indefinite how much I deserve. You're here. Today's the day to fill in the cracks of that foundation. And today is the day that through this event, through this moment, through this experience, that we begin again. So get out there and kick some butt. You did it. Yeah. We have a lot of great people that come. Right. You, you guys are here. You're watching this because you have a passion to serve and you can hear every single one of those people have a passion to serve. And some of them don't know how to do it. And they're still working on believing in themselves. And we've woken people up. And I, and I love to see that. And I love to hear that. Give me give me one second, Mo. So th these are these are the three packages that I just mentioned. So I won't go through them, but it's ninety seven dollars to attend. Bring up somebody with you. Twelve ninety seven for the guest speaker spot and then thirty five ninety seven for the VIP. Um, the link is in uh, the chat. Uh, this is just information about the event, uh, pictures of the venue and all, questions and answers here. And then again, we, we promote and we, we're always sharing pictures and showing who our, our clients and our speakers are and attendees. We always have a great fun. You can see over here on the left, uh, people showcasing their books and having a great time, jumping around, having fun in front of the banners, just the amazing people that, that we attract and that want to grow. So we, we have a great time at these events. It's an amazing time of impact, whether, like I say all the time, whether you come to attend or you come to speak, uh, we really do have a great time. What's up, Mo? Hey, the, you you know that Lopez Junior guy personally? Is he sign is he signing autographs? <laughs> I do know him. I'll I'll ask him. Okay. <laughs> I think you <he> will. <laughs> He'll take pictures with you too. He has a great time. It'll All be right. worth uh, it'll be worth the ninety seven dollars by itself. Right on, buddy. I appreciate it. Robert, what's up, buddy? Go ahead. I'll, I'll, I'll unmute. Hi again. I'm. I'm again. I'm sorry about the the camera situation. Okay. Um, but I had a question. Um, so I've been through a journey filled with incredible stories. Um, each holding truths that I think are really important to share. Uh, when you're working with speakers, do you find it more effective to focus on a single topic and speak about that consistently, or uh, do you encourage exploring multiple impactful topics? What, what I teach in the foundation of our, our talks is uh, very similar to, to even how I shared my story today. Um, but but the, the format for a 20 minute and a seven minute talk, but the format for a 20 minute talk is, is to start the impact with an impact statement, right? Something that's going to catch people's attention. And then you'll go into um, why you're the person you are today, right? Let's say you introduce yourself and you say, I'm an insurance or I'm an author, speaker, coach, whatever it is you are. And then you kind of go into the, but, but before I became this person, Here's why I'm so passionate about it. And then what you do is you 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 would share your story with me. We'd get on a couple of Zoom calls and you would share your entire story with me and you'd probably have 10, 15 wisdom points. And we'd pick about five of them and we'd, we'd expand those wisdom points into your talk. 
right? You're sharing experiences you've had. One of the wisdom points that I use all the time is I made a decision. That's a big deal. When you make a true decision, you don't stop. You don't look back. You don't think about it. You just move forward. Boom. That's that's a wisdom point, right? So we'll find five wisdom points of things that have changed your life. And those wisdom points are for other people, the fruit of the vine, like I was talking about. They're nourishment for somebody else. And you'll expand on those. So you're sharing your story. You're giving some wisdom. You're sharing your story. You're giving you some wisdom. You're sharing your story. You're giving some wisdom. Then you wrap up with who you are, what you are, and what you want for the audience, the people individually, for who, what your passion is about. And then you invite them over to your booth. That's good. That makes sense. All right. Appreciate it. You're welcome, my friend. I hope you'll join us. Did you get the link? Who else has a question? We're already at an hour in. See, I said in the beginning, I, I try to go for 20 minutes to 30, and then we end up just having a great time. Anybody else have questions before we, we close? Megan, you got a question. I can see it in your eyes. <laughs> I'm just kidding. How are things going? I'm trying to stop sneezing. I got a head cold coming on. Oh, no. I know you're working hard, too, getting ready to launch or launching in your programs and stuff, so that's cool. I know you have some good stuff that you're working on. Mr. Alan Roberts, how are you doing, my friend? You look super cool with your glasses on right there. It's kind of intimidating. Oops, unmute. You got to unmute. You're muted, my friend. Okay, I'm doing fairly well. Um, but I was just curious what this was. Mm -hmm. I'm actually training on a TEDx training at this moment. Okay. I gave my story for the first time maybe six years ago. Mm -hmm. um, when I tell my story, everybody says it's very inspirational, but um, I'm now kind of living in a hovel um, on a very poor pension and struggling. Mm -hmm. But that is part of my story. This is where I've ended up. But I'm in England, so there's no way I can get across there. Mm -hmm. uh, the glasses, because I lost my eyesight. Oh, no. So there's a lot of things in my story. But um, I'm actually a mindset coach. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually creating a mindset program for schools and students at this moment. So... Mm -hmm. This is, believe it or not, my seventh attempt to become a millionaire. Mm. My first five, um, I lost a luxury home. I lost my army career. I lost a second luxury home. I lost a business. And it was working on my fifth attempt that I suddenly discovered that my wife had deliberately put the family hundreds of thousands of pounds in debt. Mm. At that point, that I realized my wife had actually sabotaged the four previous attempts. Oh, wow. So I then, um, I lost everything. I was homeless living out in the streets. But I I, met, I, I managed to get home, um, home rehomed. And uh, I started my sixth attempt. I quickly cleared all the debts. And... Um, just at the point where I'd cleared all the debts, I thought three more years, I'll make my million. And that was the point where in the space of less than 20 minutes, I went from driving my car to being completely blind. Mm. Um, my sixth attempt came to a crashing end. Um, so now I've been into mindset for 62 years, much older than that, but um. I thought, well, what can I do? And I thought I'll create a mindset program I can put online. But unfortunately, I can't do anything technical because I just can't see what I'm doing on a computer. Mm -hmm. But I'm, Every time I can save up a bit of money, I can pay for technical support. They put the program together and eventually I'll get it online. Um, I've just had contact from the local high school. I actually introduced public speaking to the local high school. Mm -hmm. so, uh, now I'm introducing mindset to the local high school as a trial program. Oh, I love that. That's great. And then once the whole thing is together, it will go online. And then hopefully we'll start earning that seventh million again. <laughs> you got it. It's, it's coming. You, you know, um, 
we, we have a great program and it doesn't matter where you live in the world, we can help you with that. I mean, it, it, at, at this point right now, if you're not able to fly in, we do have people flying from all over the world. But at this point, if you can't fly in, I mean, I hope you guys are in the Tag Talks keynote speakers group because there's a lot of great stuff there. Um, but but I wanted to say something based on you telling me about these different challenges you had as you've been building and kind of getting pushed backwards. Uh, I, I heard this many years ago. Have you ever heard the quote, um, thieves don't break into empty houses? Don't break, I've not heard that one, no. The thieves don't break into empty houses. What, what that means is there's nothing inside that a thief wants, so they won't even bother going in, Okay. You have a passion to help people. There's something inside of you that is gold, that shines, that's light that we all have. But I'm talking to you because you mentioned that you kept getting pushed backwards and that somebody was sabotaging you. So there's an enemy that doesn't want you to shine. You have something that the world needs. Sounds like youth passion. I'm passionate for youth also. You have something that the world needs, so you're being attacked. Thieves don't break into empty houses. You're being attacked because you have something that they need. So know that and believe that and focus on that and watch the millions flow in. Thank you. You're welcome. Robert, what's up, buddy? I, I just had uh, one more question. Um, actually, actually, one and a half more questions. Um, first, uh, with, the, with the program, do you offer different kinds of specialized coaching for specific types of speaking engagements, like, like a, a keynote speech or business presentation, or uh, to be able to tailor it to the specific types of audiences. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I do that uh, personally with people one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and, and, I, and actually I'll give you just a little bit of insight on the whole corporate thing. Cause I get hired for corporate talks all the time, but, but what, I, what my core is always the personal story. And, and I'll give you, I'll give you an example. Right. Like, like I remember, I kind of gave you the structure of the wisdom points. So let's let's say, for example, uh, I, I do I do some real estate stuff. Uh, some people bring me on to, to talk to their real estate, their companies and some tech companies in the Bay Area. But I have my core story. And then, you, and then we teach you how to expand from a 20 minute all the way to a 90 minute. Right. And because it depends on who you're talking to or when you're talking and, and the kind of group. So if I take my core story. Right. And I introduce it in a way, uh, let's say I'm talking in front of a real estate group and I'm starting to talk about real estate and I want to give them, I'm saying, I'm going to teach you guys a few things that I've learned over the years about real estate and in business. But before I tell you that, I need to tell you a little bit about me and why I am the person that I am today. Can I do that? Right. So I'll ask permission and they'll say, yeah, of course I can hear. So then I'll go into my personal story because that builds the connection, right? The emotional connection, the know, the like, the trust. That's what builds. That's why you need the personal story in anything that you're doing. And then from there, when I get to a wisdom point, instead of it being like I was doing today about speaking and passion, I'll, I'll talk about real estate. So decision, a true decision you don't look back on. How many people here made a decision to go get their license in real estate? And everybody will raise their hand because it's a real estate event. And I'll go, when you made that decision, you didn't think about it. You didn't say, I'll study tomorrow. You studied your ass off because it's a hard test. And then you went and you got the license and you took all three tests and then you took the final. And then I'll go into a real estate example. And then when I get to my next wisdom point, I'll make sure it's focused on a real estate, you know, flipping a house or whatever it is, whatever the topics happen to be that they want me to talk about. So you start with your core personal story and then you expand it. And every time you expand it, you chunk into the industry that you have. That's great. That's that's excellent. I, I'm I'm really I'm just taken back by the diversity that you know that encompasses everybody that's involved with this. It, it's really it's it's moving, um, and I'm I'm really interested. And I know that the the five day challenge kind of ended, and and I I wanted I want to kind of jump into this as quickly as possible. Do I still have time to um, to be part of the talk or to to Prove myself. Absolutely. That's why. Okay. That's why we're here now. You've got. You got. Are you? Where are you located? I'm in Chicago. All right. So the first thing you can do is, is book a flight, and the LAX is easy to fly into. Um, mm -hmm. And then you need to choose, like, like what do you, what do you want to do? Do you want to do the guest speaker or or the VIP? And then as soon as you register, you'll get an email with what to do next. And then you and I will set up calls, and we'll we'll start putting your talk together and making sure you're ready. Um, we'll get all your wisdom points together. We'll get your story together. And then we're going to make sure that we have a good talk recorded so that when you get it out there, people are finding you and they're wanting to hire you for whatever industry. What, what industry are you in, by the way? I'm a, I'm a doctor. I'm, um, yeah, I'm, I'm a, a medical, medical doctor. doctor. I, yeah, I'm a medical doctor. Um, I specialize in um, psychiatric, neuropsychiatric, physiological, cognitive conditioning. 
Oh. And the neuroelectrodiagnostic is medicine. It's all it's a mouthful of, of of just fun stuff. Basically, basically neurology, um, studying cognition. Oh, I'd love to talk to you about that. I'd love to get some talks. So what what is your passion? What do you want to teach? What message do you want to get out there? Well, see, I I, I grew up in a box of limitations. I when I was eight years old, I was misdiagnosed um with ADHD, dyslexia, and a low IQ. And that label has kind of, it really has boxed me in. And it, it, I, it, when I, when I talk about it, I, I go through a lot of cert, a lot of stage, a lot of uh, difficulties that came along with that. But just so it turns out that um, my last year of high school, I got retested again. Those tests were actually found to be false because of uh, false positives and children across the United States were being misdiagnosed left and right. Turns out I do have ADHD. That I know I do. Um, but I actually, all the other tests were, were, were wrong. But anyway, it, it um, I over, I overcame that box of limitations. Everybody was kind of telling me, you can't do this. You can't do that. You know, you'll, I mean, I'll never forget the, when I wanted to apply to colleges and I would walk into my guidance counselor's office uh, i'd have my tail between my legs asking him for a letter of recommendation and i'll never forget the, the words that he said he, he literally said um i hope you're not coming in to ask me for a letter of recommendation you're never going to make it through college and mm -hmm. frankly i don't want to waste my time writing a letter for you get out and he didn't even pick his head up from the paper he, he was reading to tell me that and just anyway i went on to go and apply to college i got into four universities with private university with scholarships um i was a d student um, in one semester, I turned my life around and I graduated not once, but twice. Um, and then I went to medical school and graduated valedictorian. Um, and so I, like I broke through a lot of limitations. There, there's a whole bunch of in-between stories. Um, mm -hmm. I, I advocate right now for physician suicide and depression. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it's it's a it's a huge it's a huge situation that's happening in in the world right now. Actually, doctors and medical students are four times more likely than the general population to take their lives by suicide. And um, so, oh yeah, and uh, uh, just in this year, just since January first, um, I have had eight colleagues of mine um, in Chicago uh, take their lives by suicide. Wow. They, yeah, and gunshots mostly but um now they're jumping off the buildings off the hospitals uh, out of the windows it, it's 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 a real it's a real scare but i like to expose i, I want to my aim is to release the veil take the veil off of the mm -hmm. the hidden secrets that a lot of people don't know about the life of doctoring um yeah what, that's what it really means because I, I didn't know that. And I bet you every, anybody on this call had no idea that there was even a statistic for that. Because, you know, we, we hear about military. We hear about youth. You know, we hear about different things. But I've never heard there's such a statistic with with uh, with, with, with doctors. You know, it's, yep. it, yeah, no, you, have, it you, have with, message. you have a message that needs to be heard. I knew about it with <laughs> dentists because I used to work in the dental industry and dentists oh, right. are very high. Oh, wow. Well, actually, now, now, now it's actually. Yeah. And that was that's very true. That, that was actually for the majority of time. Yep, but but it it has recently taken a huge shift. Uh, medical students and um, and doctors, uh, but so at any one time there is uh, yeah. one there's one in four people grappling with major depression disorder, the de major depressive disorder, and at any one time, one out of two doctors is grappling with major depressive disorder. Um, so it, it is it's a huge thing. There's medical school student bullying that's going on and that's it. that's another topic that you know i was i fell victim to and um i almost was a statistic wow. so i talk about how i how i was able to rise from that because i i graduated valedictorian of my medical school not by academic standards because i i did i was second place um the reason why i was valedictorian was because a few days before my graduation i received a call from an official and I thought it was just a routine call. They were telling me you're you're going to be our new valedictorian, and I was like, I, "Really? That's that's surprising." A couple minutes later, I got a pit in my stomach, and they're telling me uh, our current valedictorian he just took his life on the last day of exams. And wow. this was a friend of mine, and um, yeah, he didn't even get a chance to see. He he aced all of his exams. He you know, but he's he'll never know it. He'll never know what it feels like to go into residency and. 
mm-hmm. and you know his parents will have empty chairs you know that's what i'm thinking it, it, and it was it, it was a horrible reality mm. you know four more students in wow. my class shortly after that took their lives wow. um and it's just th- th- so there's a lot that's going on behind behind those white curtains that a lot of people don't really know about and um and i want to shed the shed the light on that and wow. a lot of hidden truths thank, thank you i mean the the it's powerful I, I had i had no idea there was such things going on and i think i had heard dennis before now that you say that but um i had no idea right i mean it, it all people we're human we're human, right? And one of the things that, that I talk about, because like even I, if you were here for this whole call, then in the beginning when I was talking about, you know, belief in ourselves and the things we hear and the things people tell us, then you were resonating with that, even with the story you just said, right? About being young and yeah. and, uh, and and being diagnosed with all of these things. Um, so it's it's all people. And, and one of the, like I was gonna say, one of the things I talk about is people a lot of times will come to me after I share my message and they'll say, I, they used to say this to me, or they still do say this to me, but I didn't understand it before. They would say, I'd have a line after I'd share my message and they'd say, hey, I, I, I have the same story, but different. They would always tell me that. I had the same life, but different. And I would ask them like, what, what do you mean? Like, how, how? And they say, well, you know, I don't know. I, it's just, we, we, we experienced the same thing, but I didn't go to jail and I wasn't on drugs and, you know, gangs. And I, so I would be like, well, how is it the same life then? And what I learned over the years, working with people and talking to people in this industry and coaching people around trauma and things is that emotional pain is emotional pain. It's the same thing. So if you're having emotional pain over a car accident and this person's having emotional pain over, you know, a, a breakup, the emotional pain is the same. So when you're sharing your message and, and they sense and feel your emotion, they could they 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 feel you literally. They understand you literally because they felt the same pain. So you have a powerful message to get out there. And and and, and man, I mean, just listen to you right now. You you need to get that message out there. I, I say that to everybody, but when as soon as somebody shares with me, I go, man, what are you doing? <laughs> you, you have the wisdom. You, you have to get that out there. It's almost selfish not to. I'll say that straight up. You, you, I don't care if you share it with me and my platform or not. You need to get that message out there. That's that's the number one thing. I don't know how you got on here today, but I'm glad you did. And it's probably for a reason. But Robert, I hope, I, you know, me- message me. I, I, when I'm on these calls, sometimes I, I give my phone number out. I'm not going to do it here because we're on all the social media platforms right now. I'll have a million people texting me and calling me and some will be nice and some will be mean. That's just how life is these days. <laughs> don't you want to be popular? <laughs> but um, uh, Robert, how, how did we connect? Um, so through uh, through another um, speaker, uh, Hannah. Oh, okay, um, Hannah. She was yeah. just a minute ago. Okay. Yeah. So, so <laughs> um, let's let's connect on social media. You can find me under Raul Lopez Jr. Okay. Find me under Tag Talks. Let's connect and let's get it. Let's chat and let's uh, let's help you get your message out there, man. I'd love to. I'd love to talk to you more, Robert. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. All right, my friend. Thank you for being here. Anybody else? Man, we're two hours and two, or an hour and 20 minutes. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out. I appreciate you guys. Any other questions before we go? I'm here to answer, so I'm not going anywhere if, unless, unless we're done here. Good? All right. All I can say is I had a wonderful time. I love what I do, and I want you to love what you do by helping others. So, so Mr. Alan Roberts, Doreen Sloan, Megan Marie Cochin. Mo, the motivator, Neil, the purpose-driven man, and Robert, I still can't pronounce your last name. So Dr. Robert, thank you so much. I appreciate you. And I will talk to you guys again soon. Everybody who's on Facebook and social media and everywhere we're at, thanks so much for being here. Message me, connect with me. The links are everywhere. Just just get a ticket, just attend. That's all you need to do. If you want to speak, talk to me and we will go from there. All right. Thanks so much, you guys. Love and blessings.